everyone, welcome to Dasmod video tutorials. Today I would like to make a general guidance video about how to water cool your graphical cards. It's not model specific and I will try to be as generic as possible. The sponsor of today's video is Zotac International who provided us with the two GTX 470s which is part of our orange build which is uh, based on custom painted case by MNCP Tech. You're welcome to follow our build blog as a separate series on our YouTube channel. But today we'll talk about how to water cool cars. So before we'll actually go and start putting blog on this card, I would like to make a few general remarks. When you buy your card, make sure you research the market and find out if actually this card can be water cooled. There are certain manufacturers make minor modifications to the cards and uh, the circuit board can make have a different components from the reference design. In this case, you, you, it will be difficult to find the blocks that will fit your card. You always can go with a not full cover block which doesn't look as nice, um, but if you go with universal block, you will cool only your main chip and uh, you will have to still use the heat sinks on the memory and uh, voltage regulator so it's it's half water cooled solution because part of the card will be water cooled and part of the card will still require uh, some fan blowing on the card and cool, cool your um, heat sinks that attach to everything around the central processing unit so make your research read the manufacturers websites look on the forums and before you commit to certain manufacturer and certain model make sure that you actually have a cart uh, full cover block for that and this will save you from a lot of grief this is especially important for the uh, region products nvidia is more standard based it's very rarely you get certain variation maybe one or two region Every manufacturer goes for whatever they want, they keep changing the circuit board design and finding block for that particular brand AMD, it can be much more difficult. So you might need to keep it into consideration when you do it. So, so now let's look on the, what the practical steps you need to do to continue with cooling your card. So you have your card first and you find that certain block will fit it and you purchase your block. So now let's go to the working area and see what exactly needs to be done to put block on the card. To water cool your video card you need a few things. First of all, the block itself that you work diligently and find out that it will fit your card so no surprises in the end. Whatever manufacturer you choose will using EK in our case. You need uh, some tools, a screwdriver to disassemble and assemble the card scissors to cut your thermal pads that is part of installation process you might use your own thermal paste in case of uh, manufacturer provide you with some no-name product so you want to use something that you know is a good quality for sure the same thing you might use better quality thermal pads than what is provided with manufacturers packages it's entirely optional some cards might have a uh, back plates and you can choose your back plate for the card if it exists we will use back plate in our case and uh, if you have all this in place you can start working on the preparation of the card to get card ready for water block installation what you need to do is obviously take it out of the package and remove the manufacturer installed the uh, fan and heatsink assembly. To do so, there's a few screws you need to take care of. One of them on the bracket. As I can see, it's only two in our case. And the uh, variety of the screws on a PCB. Each model will be different. Just uh, look uh, on everything that seems uh, relevant to attaching this fan thing to, to the PCB itself and just work diligently on unscrewing every single one.
Next step can be a little bit tricky. Because the whole assembly between fan and heat sink is already seated on some thermal grease, it actually gets sucked up to PCB. So don't expect that when you remove all screws, you can just lift uh, the whole thing and they will they will separate. So basically, you need to wiggle a little bit uh, PCB against uh, the assembly uh, for the fan and uh, try to. To work through the resistance of the suction. Here you go. So next what we need to do is disassemble this little connector from the fan. And this part, it's up to you. You can throw it out or you can leave it in case you decide to sell cardio later or maybe you'd like even come back to uh, air-cooled version of the card. So that's, that's what we have right now. All I need to do is a clean thermal grease from the main chip and we can proceed with preparation of the block itself. Next step, you need to deal with your block. So whatever manufacturer you, model you choose, we have a K in our case. So you need to open your package and check out what you get inside. So you, typically you have your manual, some supporting hardware, thermal pods, and the block itself. You may or may not get some uh, thermal paste there's nothing in this case, so that's good that we have some MX4 already. And the model that we chose for this particular build is a Willis Plexi, Plexi Top. That's the reason why we would like to have everything orangey. And we have a case right there, you have orange radiator and will be orange motherboard. And I'd like to use some orange LEDs to light up the plastic glass on this block. So. What first thing you need to do that seriously take the manual and look for the steps. This will help you to understand what it takes to install the block. You need what parts you need. You, you can check that you actually have all those parts in place and uh, you can proceed with installation. For the next step, your main tool will be scissors, because what you need to do to take supplied parts from your package and cut them in little pieces that will fit exactly locations that says in your manual. Typically, this is your memory, chips and some voltage regulators. In my particular case, I will use my own thermal pods, and the reason for that is two. One, I know for sure that they have very high level conductivity numbers, so they are very high performance ones. And the second reason is the one side self adhesive. So when I put my little piece on the chip, it will be sit exactly location when I need. And when I install my block, I don't need to worry that it will slide somewhere and will sit improperly. So some peace of mind for easy installation. That's the reason why I do that. The trick how you want to cut them exact, you just can put them on a on a chip like that location and uh, because pod is squishable just kind of gently press it around the chip and you will get exact imprint of the size here you go so you can cut and uh, in my particular case it's perfect two pieces uh, per cut so which is very nice and when you install your thermal pods Make sure that you take protective film from both sides. Here you go. So one side is self-adhesive, so it's definitely you will take it out. No, but the other side is not. So you. Take it out and make sure that it's not there, otherwise you'll have a problem. With the K-pods, both sides has a film and you just need to take both. So you keep working throughout 
the card and uh, I'll just speed up and we'll go with the next step. Here I have all thermal pads attached in all places that it's supposed to be. I use exactly two of those, so it was enough for this particular card, good sizing. And what next I need to do is apply thermal paste on the main chip and uh, spread it across uh, whatever method you'd like to use. I'm not going to show it because I use my own method, I just uh, spread it with a credit card across the chip. I get a lot of flame about it, so guys, do whatever you like. Everything is ready, standoffs on the block, thermal pads in place, thermal grease applied to the GPU, main chip. So all is left, it's just to lower the card on a block, line it up and screw it on with the screws attached. So let's just try to do that. High possibility you need to remove the bracket because otherwise it will be on the way on a block installation. And uh, let's try to put it on. Few final touches. I drilled two holes to put three millimeter UV LEDs so my liquid will be glowing when I install the block. I also will attach the bracket and uh, put a back plate. Just just a question of screwing a few uh, screws and nuts together, so it's not very difficult. Mounting back plate is a very straightforward task. Not very difficult. You need to remove a couple screws from existing installation of your block. You put your plate in place, line it up, and just put screws back, as easy as that. Here's our end result, the beauty is ready, I installed bracket, block is in place, and even back plate is installed and ready. So, as you see, it wasn't that difficult after all, and the same steps can be applied for any other block you might have.